the moon has finally abated and it's uh, we've got a little bit of cloud cover coming in and uh, that means only one thing that's getting out on the foxes and tonight we're going to be going absolutely covertly so we've got the thermal spotters so we've got the accolade and we've got the uh, pulsar trail on the top of um, my 22 250 tonight and uh, i'm hoping that we're going to catch up with a few foxes that i've been waiting to get on to and uh, fingers crossed if all goes well and uh, david doesn't flag them up then we should be away with it so uh, wave your arm wave my arm Where's the security guy? <laughs> Anyone there? Here I am again. I thought you were filming an IR. Do you want to, st do you want to start that again then? No, 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 the light was gone. <laughs> Well, that was really interesting. We had a fox come in from behind first, and we just turned around to have a look at it. And as the IR from David's camera just picked up on it, that turned tail and disappeared. And then we had another one um, just coming through the woods, just emerging. And, um, and as that was coming in, David just put the camera onto that one, and then that one just tailed it off into the woods as well. So they must definitely be picking up on the IR on that. So that was incredibly interesting. Um, not, obviously not, uh, not what we were after, um, but had it not been for the, uh, the camera, we would have definitely been in on those two. Rubbish. 100%. I'm absolutely over the moon with that. Charlie spotted one immediately as we got out of the car. And again, no lights going off, nothing going off. And the fox was just quite happily bimbling around down there doing a little bit of mousing. And bearing in mind that we're just coming into November, so these are certainly not young foxes. Uh, so we shot that one. And then Charlie scanned left and there was another fox coming in from the left. We shot that one. And I thought we'd ramp up, up a little bit. And um, we changed callers, started calling. And another fox popped out of the woods just down there, came out, we got the shot on that one. And then I kept calling because I know there has been a real tricky old dog that comes in from the horse fields over there. But he, what he does, he normally just tends to pop his head over and as soon as the, the lamp or whatever else goes on him, then he's just away down the hill and, and back off into his territory. Charlie just picked up his heat signature of his head, just peering around to the side of the hill. And he just came in, so I had a, a fantastic backstop for him um, and gave us a, a lovely little shot just there. So four foxes in about 10 minutes, um, just with the calling. And again, there's no way we would have got those unless we were using thermal. Is it cricket? It's really, really not cricket. It's just devastatingly effective. And again, <laughs> it really doesn't seem fair. So uh, yeah, it's, uh, as I say, a very, very effective method, but um, you could certainly uh, reduce your fox population um, a lot more rapidly than uh, any other means I've ever tried.
So we've ended up with um, three dogs and a vixen there. The vixen, I would say, is probably coming into heat, so that's why we've got the, the three dogs all hanging around in the same field. These fields especially need to be uh, controlled quite heavily because this is where a lot of the lambing will be going on um, early spring. So yeah, we, it, is, uh, it is quite paramount that we, uh, we keep, uh, keep heavily on top of them here. So again, that worked superbly. We had um, one fox that we saw originally just up on the top of the hill, and that then came came down, and then it came all the way around us trying to get our wind. I was just trying to come round on the top of the hill. I had to just wait for it to get into a little spot where I had a backstop and got that one. And then as I shot that one, another one had just started coming directly in line with it from the woods behind. And it came up, the, sh the, sh the, um, the shot stopped it and it was sitting there and then it just snuck its way up. Um, and we're just, again, just trying to come round. It wasn't overly keen on coming in. So we walked away from the truck, came up and round to try and come back down on it. And it had tucked itself in. We just found it on the thermal, tucked into the bushes here. Um, and I set up on the, uh, the Viper Flex sticks from um, Best Fox Call. And then um, the fox just trickled back out as we came up and over the top and just sat about 150, 200 yards um, down in the valley. And it just gave me, again, a perfect opportunity. And again, it really is just so effective. Um, yeah, I mean, we've, uh, we've got a couple more spots to do. Um, and uh, I know Dave is looking a little bit fatigued, but I'm sure he can uh, pucker up for tonight. And uh, we shall crack on and um, see if we can get a few more. But yeah, no, another two in. So we're certainly starting to build up quite a, a decent bag for November foxing anyway. This is going to be our, our last stand of the night. Um, and there have been a couple of foxes out here and we're not far from home here. And um, we've got the, the young wind jack in the paddock there. So I'm, a bit, I'm very keen on making sure that we take all the foxes around at the moment because um, a little munt jack in the paddock there is uh, easy pickings for, for foxes especially this time of year when they're starting to get hungry so we'll uh, just get down here set the rifle up have our last squeak of the night and hopefully we may get one or two Interesting. I didn't realise there was a bit of mis miscommunication between Charlie and I. So we had a, a fox came belting in. 
Charlie said there was one coming in, and um, I didn't realise that there was two coming in at the same time. And I was tracking one that came right from the bottom, came jumping across the fence, and then worked his way up here. But unbeknownst to me, there was already one that had made its way up and was up on our left. It was only about 30 or 40 yards away, so Charlie was recording that one, um, and I was recording the other one through the, uh, the scope. And I think David was unfortunately on the one that I didn't shoot. So um, I shot that one, um, the one that was slightly further back. Um, and then this one, I just saw a flash of him going out across the field and um, he made his way back down to the bottom. But um, we've ended up with seven for a couple of hours out. Um, and uh, we've still got an awful lot of farms to catch up on now. So it's, uh, I think it's gonna be a very interesting couple of weeks.